few minutes. Uh, we're going to give about a two minute for everybody to log on and finish up their lunch. And thank you for joining us this afternoon. Welcome to the second half of the North Carolina Virtual Fire Safety Summit. You are in for a treat this afternoon. We have pulled together a panel of some of the most exciting, innovative folks in North Carolina to showcase the different types of agencies, different approaches and ways for you to meet the needs of your community. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Maria. If you have questions, please enter them in the Q&A at the end of the session. We're going to do a Q&A. So as they're presenting, if you have questions, list those in the Q&A, which is at the bottom, and then make sure you communicate with each other through the chat. So we'll be putting links in there and uh, just general conversation between and statements in chat. And then if you'll put the questions in the Q&A. Also, at the end of the session, we're going to have an evaluation link. And we would really appreciate your feedback on has this summit been useful, what you would like to see for next year, because boy, do we hope we're going to be together for next year. Also, after the conclusion of the summit in the next couple of days, you'll be receiving uh, a certificate for however much time you stayed on. So if you did the morning and the afternoon, you'll get four hours of training. If you were only able to do one or the other, it will give you that many hours of training. And then we're also working out how to send out the recording and it will either be posted online or if you were registered, it will be sent out. So thank you for joining us. And with that, I'll turn it over to Maria. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from Kannapolis, North Carolina. It's nice to see you. We have put a great panel together. Um, Kelly started thinking several months ago what can we do now that Fire Prevention Week is over? So after talking to everyone, um, we came up with the theme, Fire Prevention Week is over, now what? So it is uh, great to have everybody here. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and we are going to get started. Uh, well, hold on, there's always something. There, everybody seeing that okay? All right. So today's presentation has a variety of different fire and life safety education and public information personnel from across the state, all different size departments. And we are proud to have everyone from the coast all the way to the mountains. We're gonna focus on several main components of what's next. Everyone, when I talked to them personally, they all said, I think that times are changing and we will be doing more virtually now than ever before. So some of the themes that you're gonna hear today are social media, your website development and content, and then how to do things virtually, videos, programs, trainings, things like that. If you have a piece of paper or something with you, go ahead and make a little mind map or a little note. What I'd like for you to do is try to come away from at least one key point from each speaker today. So just this is an example of what's called a mind map. You don't have to do it this way. I just threw it in there to give you an idea of what this might look like. And then we also want you to be thinking about what can I do? So can you set some goals? Is there something that you got? Maybe it was from the morning session today. Um, I got a lot of information from Shannon and Kelly. Uh, what can you do by Thanksgiving? What can you do in a few weeks? So what can you do by the end of next month, by New Year's Eve? And then a little bit longer out, what can you do within six months time? So like mid-May or so. And without further ado, we're going to turn it over to Ben Powell. He is our first speaker today, and he is from the North Carolina Department of Public Insurance, or North Carolina Department of Insurance. He serves there as the communication specialist. He does the NCDOI, OSFM, and Safe Kids North Carolina public information. He manages all the social media pages 
writes press releases, and handles all the video work. Before this job, Ben worked as a TV news reporter for eight years. In five, years, five of those years in Wilmington at WECT News, and then three years in Greensboro at WFMY News Channel 2. He's married to his wife, Laura, and they live in Raleigh with their five-year-old golden retriever, Leo. So I, we're gonna turn it over to Ben right now. Hey, Maria, thank you. I appreciate that introduction. Yes, uh, I was a former reporter and, and my dog, Leo, is here. And if he starts barking in the middle of the presentation, I apologize. Uh, my wife's on dog duty, so hopefully she'll get that under control. But uh, anyways, so we're here, I'm here to talk about social media. And uh, of course, as Maria mentioned, coming from the, uh, the media background that I have as a news reporter, um, we, social media was a huge part of that job. And we were always looking for new strategies on how to reach new people and build our engagement. Now running the pages for uh, OSFM and Department of Insurance and Safe Kids. It's a little different working for a government agency, just like it would be for a fire station or uh, whichever organization that you all out there are representing. Um, but some of the strategies are, are the same. So uh, what I'm here to do is just kind of give you a few things to think about whether or not you're trying to build up your page, uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or, or whatever. There's always a new social media gadget and gizmo right and it's hard to understand all of it um so you know we'll just get right into it the first thing i want to talk about is social listening and if you haven't ever heard that term that's a term that we talked about a lot in the media and really what it is is if you don't listen to what our audience wants we won't really be able to connect with them. We won't be able to help them. And I think this is true in our personal lives as well as how we approach our audience on social media. Um, so the question is, what is social listening? And uh, if we want to go to the next slide there, Maria. Um, social listening is really a process of kind of just reviewing what's going on out there on Facebook or Twitter, reviewing conversations, looking at trends, not just happening within your organization or your fire station, but around your industry as a whole. And you can use those insights to kind of guide you and make better decisions on what you're going to post. So social listening understand, helps you understand where and why these conversations are happening and what people think about it. And it helps you in your content strategy and your messaging. So the questions you should be thinking about while you're you know, trying to process social listening is, who is your audience? How do they feel, not just about your organization, but topics related to what you do? Which topics and trends are they passionate enough to, about to discuss online? And what do you think they want? And how you can connect with them more effectively? So, you know, it's one of those things where I spend a good amount of my day every day just kind of scrolling around on on pages that are like ours specifically for safe kids i look at some of the coalitions across the state and what they're posting about what people are commenting about is perhaps even more uh insightful because you can see what people are commenting and what people are saying and what the people out there are are really trying to get out and that kind of brings me to my next topic which is engagement um, what is in social media engagement? It's a big, broad umbrella that covers a whole lot of different things. And if you want to go ahead and move to the next slide there, Maria, um, it covers a lot of metrics. And the trick is here just kind of understanding engagement on a really broad level. Um, basically, engagement on Facebook is comments, likes, shares, messages, page clicks, profile clicks, it's all under that umbrella of engagement. And the question here is what posts are more engaging than others? So I'll just talk a little bit about what works for us uh, at, the, at OSFM and DOI. I try to post daily, but not too much. You don't wanna overload your audience because then they'll uh, kind of get turned off if you're constantly posting you know, five, six, seven times a day. Um, so I try to keep it between one and three posts per day. Um, I always use a picture. Um, I think most of you probably already know that already, but images that you can use, any kind of pictures or video will definitely perform better than just posting out information in written form. Um, I think I saw somewhere that posts with images perform 85% better 
than just regular postings. Um, offer a value. What I mean by that is kind of give your audience something that they can get out of following you by, right? Um, you know, give them tools that you can use to improve their lives. You can invite your followers to attend an upcoming event or a webinar that you're hosting uh, or something where they can learn something new. Um, or even, you know, and I'll talk a little bit more about this later, but engaging is also uh, getting people to comment and, and, and talk on your page. And so sometimes post something controversial just to kind of stir the pot a little bit, you know, nothing too crazy. But, uh, you know, getting people talking is kind of the idea of engagement. Facebook is like a community. Um, so you want to be personal. You don't want to post things that sound like a press release. You want to show the audience that there's a real person behind your brand and kind of post something and, and start that conversation. Um, in 2018, I read that Facebook kind of changed the way that they, they rank their algorithm. So uh, they prioritize personal posts over brand page posts, if that makes sense. So if you can uh, write posts with more active and thoughtful interactions, you'll, you'll end up reaching more people. Um, tagging and hashtagging, I find that some of our, our best performing posts on our page comes when I'm able to tag other organizations or other fire stations and also use a lot of hashtags because people will kind of look through those and look for more opportunities for your post to be shared. Um, moving on to uh, the next slide here, Maria, the faith video and Facebook Live. Um, those can be extremely effective ways of growing your audience. Um, just a couple of things that I've noticed about video and that I've read about. Um, well, first of all, I'll say that when you're doing a video, a lot of people think it needs to be this big, you know, glamorous, professional level production. It really doesn't. I mean, it's, it's Facebook, right? I mean, people are just watching these on their phones or when they have an extra few minutes here and there when they're in the middle of running errands. I mean, and it, you don't need a big expensive camera. Honestly, if you have an iPhone or, or any kind of new phone these days, they shoot almost just as good a video as a professional style camera. So if you have any ideas to do just a fun video around, around your fire station or an educational offering some safety tips or, or doing a challenge or something, I think video can be a really fantastic way for people to get to know you better, which is gonna help your page grow at the same time. Um, for Facebook, you wanna keep your videos short, between two and three minutes is, is kind of what performs the, be the best on Facebook. Anything shorter doesn't get as much views and anything longer is, is really hard to keep people's attention for that long. Um, Facebook Live, I've found, is the opposite. Uh, you wanna keep Facebook Live going for at least 10 minutes, maybe 15 or 20 if you can, uh, because what that does is it, it gives you time to build your audience. People are coming in, they stay, you know, kind of, keep it going, even if it's not, again, the nothing much going on. You can kind of just talk to the people at home while you're doing the Facebook Live. Um, and it, it just gives you a chance to really create some interaction and engagement. And that Facebook Live, after it's over, it stays on your page so people can go back afterwards and watch it and, ke and catch up. Um, a couple of tips if you're doing videos. Try to capture people's attention early. Um, if you'll notice that when you're scrolling on Facebook, those videos will start to automatically play. You don't have to push a button. So if you can capture your audience attention in the first few seconds, uh, you know, just with something kind of exciting or, or a, a nice pretty shot or a good background or something like that, you'll have a, a higher chance of stopping somebody from scrolling past and, and get them to stay and watch your, your video. Um, keep your message simple. Again, it's Facebook. It doesn't have to be like a national TV production. It can be something silly. It can be something fun. But the, uh, the idea is, you know, keep your message simple. If it's an educational video, what's the most important message that you want to deliver to your audience and kind of stick to the highlights and again, keep it short. Um, and then another thing that I've found um, has, has made a difference is you want to design your videos to be played with the sound off. So, you know, a lot of people are watching videos on their phones all the time, whether they're at work or, or, or at home or on the commute or waiting in line at the grocery store. So they might not always want the sound on, but if you can um, 
either write your own captions or subtitles or Facebook also allows you to do, uh, it auto creates subtitles for you. So if you're doing a video, make sure you check on that on, on Facebook where it will auto generate your subtitles. Uh, the only thing I'll tell you about that is make sure you go back and double check because Facebook will sometimes mis make mistakes like an autocorrect on your phone. It'll make a mistake to something that you didn't mean. So you'll want to go back and change that. So, um, all right, moving on to analytics here. Analytics are a little bit more confusing, but it can also be a good way of kind of helping guide your decision making on what to post, how frequently to post, what type of posts work for your page. And, and Facebook offers several great tools right there on Facebook. You don't have to buy anything, uh, any kind of uh, performing or uh, engagement performing software to track this. So um, if you look on page insights under Facebook, which is uh, the screenshot that I have pulled up there on the slide, uh, you can see how your page is performing and you can break it down by the number of likes you get, your total reach, your page views, your page previews, and, and there's a, a handful of other metrics here. Let's go ahead to the next slide. And uh, I gave you an example of where if you click on uh, I believe this is reach right here. You can see how individual posts are performing compared to others within those metrics. And then if you can scroll down, we'll go to the next slide and you'll see one of my favorite functions, the post by post analysis. Um, this is really helpful for us because it allows us to go back and see how well one post is com performing compared to another one. Uh, or does pictures work or videos work better than, than you know, just doing something else like that. So um, it, it helps us decide kind of where we're going to go with our page and, and what our next decision is going to be um, as far as how we, we track those analytics. And um, I mean, we, we kind of look into these at least once a week. We do a social media analytics report where we see um, just kind of go back and look and, and it helps guide us on what we're going to do next. So. Um, my last slide here, final thoughts. I'm trying to keep this as brief as I can because I know we have a lot of speakers here. And so I put this little silly picture here, but it's, it's think outside the box. And honestly, this is something I wish that we could do more. Um, but working for a government agency, of course, we, we kind of have a, a structure for how we post. But I, I really would love it if I could do some more kind of creative outside the box thinking, start a conversation, get people to comment, ask people to tell us their stories. And, you know, again, don't be afraid to post something controversial, get people talking, stir the pot a little bit, do a photo contest, um, you know, do a, a post about you know, if you're, if you're out to lunch eating hot dogs, post that and, you know, you'd be surprised that something like that will do, those posts will do better than, than anything else you post that week. Is you ask people, what's your favorite hot dog and get them sounding off about that. Or, uh, you know, I, I picked this red tie. Should I wear a blue tie? What do you guys think? You know, sometimes, you know, the simplest, silliest posts will really do well. And it'll help you, you know, again, kind of show the human element behind the Facebook page and, and let your audience get to know you. So try new things. Don't be afraid to fail. Uh, it doesn't have to be too serious. You can have fun with it. And, um, you know, again, that's something that I'd like to work on myself. So that's what I'll leave you with, Maria. Um, if there's any other questions, I'm happy to answer. Um, so just let me know. All right, well, that's perfect. I don't know about you, but I've already written down my long-term goal because that whole thing that you talked about with what's your favorite, what you know, what are your favorite hot dog top it, toppings? Wouldn't that be great to use mid-May while we get everyone thinking about grilling safety for Memorial Day? So sure. Thank you, Ben. I've got that written down as something to do next spring. All right. Our next speaker we are really excited to hear from is Teresa Knox with Elkin Fire Department. Teresa joined the fire service in 1993 as a member of Reynolds Volunteer Fire Department. And in, two, and in 1994, she joined Safe Kids Western North Carolina. She's a current member of Safe Kids Surrey County. She has numerous certifications, including fire and life safety educator, 
three, as well as instructor, and she teaches many of the fire and life safety education classes in Surrey County, Forsyth, and also Guilford. She was a team member of the development team for the North Carolina Fire and Life Safety Educator Cer Certification, the 2015 edition curriculum, and she does volunteer fire work, volunteer work. Um, she's on the IAFC Human Relations Committee, and she's also a member of the Junior League Winston-Salem as the volunteer development um, committee member. Um, so without further ado, I do want to tell you she's got an exciting presentation and she's up there in the beautiful Surrey County. If you get a chance to get up there and um, visit, um, you will certainly see how she adds a little spice to her presentation and how she kind of shows you a little bit of what her world has looked like for the last couple months. So um, Teresa, are you ready? I'm ready. Can you see All me? Right, here goes. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Maria. Good afternoon, everyone. As Maria said, my name is Teresa, and I am a full-time captain and the recruitment and retention coordinator for Elkin Fire Department. And all the other panelists uh, that are speaking this afternoon, you have either heard of or been to their towns or know of their organizations. However, you have, may never have heard of Elkin. And for those of you who have not ever heard of Elkin, Elkin is a town of 4,000 located in Surrey County, which is a county of about 72,000. We border Virginia. We're right up I-77, about an hour from Charlotte. And we are, as Maria said, in the beautiful mountains, mountains and foothills of North Carolina. Next slide, please. So now that Fire Prevention Week is over, we, we stop and think about the fact that we use a lot of valuable resources to spread our messaging during Fire Prevention Week. And we get so excited about all the schools we went to and all the daycares we went to and the station tours that we did. And we put together nice reports and we give them to our agency and our coalition. Maybe we put it in the paper. And we do this from year to year. And we typically have a very specific audience during October. So what happens from one year to the next? How do we continue that messaging? And is that the only audience that we need to look at? So if you've ever taken a class from me, you know that the one thing that I talk about over and over and over again is knowing your audience. For me, that is a key component for creating an effective fire and life safety education program that is sustainable, that is successful, and allows you to give appropriate messaging. So we're gonna look at three things, the audience, the delivery and the messaging. Next slide, please. All right, so Maria asked. Can you hear me? Am I back? Yes, you're back. Okay, where where did I where did I get lost? Um, if you want to start right as ask yourself. As we okay. get on this slide. Thank you, Kelly. All right, so everybody's got their notepad and their pen or their pencil, and I would like for you to write these three questions down. Who is my audience? What forms of messaging should I use? And how should I format the message? And across the board, whether you've been an educator for 10 months or 10 years, this is not a question that you should ask just once. This is a question that you should ask on an annual basis, and maybe even more frequently right now. For those of you who do not know this, North Carolina is actually a migration destination for families and uh, uh, people that are moving away from the big cities due to the pandemic. So is your community one of these migration destinations? And does that change your audience? So again, just be thinking about that. And, Answering these three questions, maybe uh, scribbling down some ideas, perhaps you want to talk to your real estate agents to see if people are coming into your community. This may help you with your goals of Thanksgiving and New Year's and into next year. Next slide, please. Okay, I keep muting. Reverse, please. Slide before that. Keep in mind that our audiences are both internal and external. And what I mean by internal audience is that every September, 
we're, we're a combination fire department and we train on Monday nights and every September, every September, at least one Monday night, we sit down for our training session and we talk about what the theme for fire prevention week is and we practice whatever it might be. And one of my favorite photos is of all our members sitting around drawing their home fire escape plan. Because we all know that firefighters are notorious for not having working smoke alarms, not everybody not wearing bike helmets, uh, their child safety seats not being installed correctly. So I think it's really important that we don't forget our own internal audience. Next slide, please. All right, so how do we figure out who our audience is? Well, we can start with research. Uh, we can look at our demographics, be it the, uh, the planning development, the Chamber of Commerce, the Emergency Services Department, all the way to the United States Census Bureau. Now those demographics are figures on paper and it's a good starting point, but we really shouldn't stop there. And that's where we need to get to the boots on the ground. And for those of you in the audience and on the panel who know me and have known me for years, like Marie and Kelly, you know that I love the boots on the ground part. I like to get out there and see who's in our community. Now in a town of 4,000, that's pretty easy for me to do. But if you're in a larger community, when you look at your demographics, it's gonna make high risk areas, treat those as small communities. And get out there and see if you have a breakfast club. That's what we affectionately call that group of older men who like to go to the local restaurant in the mornings and have their coffee and their little biscuit and they're reading the paper. Go in once a week, once a month. And when, I, when I'm doing my presentation, sometimes I'll talk about COVID and sometimes I won't. So let's just say there's, there's a restaurant and we can go in, you know, and sit and have a cup of coffee with them and, and talk to them. And you're gonna find out things like, Maybe they're struggling and they don't have heat and they're using their stoves or they, um, they don't have working smoke alarms or one, all their friends are falling and breaking their hips. There's all these, plus they know your face. And, and that is so important to me, even in a small community like this. And particularly now with COVID, people want to see your face. You can also find out things like, is there a Catholic church that has a Spanish mass? Uh, you can get out there and talk to your real estate agents, see who's moving into your community. And again, like I said, with us being a migration destination, they're coming here. They are coming to Surrey County and Maria has been up here and she knows how beautiful it is. And they are, they are coming to the mountains. Next slide, please. I participated in a Facebook uh, event on, I believe it was Monday. Yes, was it yesterday? When did we do that? yesterday, where we, uh, the panelists talked about winter fire safety and how to reach people during COVID. And one of the things that we talked about, or the panelists talked about, was that not being able to get out there and do our activities during fire prevention month has been really hard on us as fire and life safety educators. That that's something that we look forward to every year, that we just, that's, we just don't, we didn't know, I didn't know what to do when I couldn't do it. It wasn't the same not looking, not being able to look out the window and seeing the kids walk down the street from the elementary school. And the members of our fire department really looked forward to it too. And it was like there was something missing. We, you know, it's like you're wandering around going, there's something wrong, what is it? And so remember too that not only are the, our, our external audience, we need to remember them. Remember your internal audience too. And we've done some things here and we did some things during Fire Prevention Month to, to try and keep everyone engaged who missed that. We got them engaged with the virtual station tours and putting together bags for the elementary school and anything that we could because when you've been in the fire service for decades like I have and you've seen a lot of horrible things, that month of seeing happy faces on children makes it all worthwhile. Next slide, please. Again, the key to successful fire safety messaging is to know your audience. Do we need to go to them? Do we need to go see the breakfast club? You know, do we need to go to the library during story time? And we need to be asking ourselves questions like, is the standard messaging going to work with our audience? Next slide, please. All right, so our fire station uh, was founded in 1914, Elkin Fire Department. And in 2014, I started a Facebook page to celebrate our 100 year anniversary. That was its primary purpose. 
when you fast forward to now, it has evolved into so much more. And I even have, now I have help. I have a firefighter who does our Saturday safety posts and Feeling Friday posts. And one of our posts on the dangers of texting and driving actually got 12, 1,200 shares. And 1,200 shares is a lot for a little community of 4,000. So we're really proud of, of the work that we've been able to do and the messaging that we've been able to get out, not just on Facebook, but now we're also on Twitter and Instagram as well. And what I have found during COVID is that those that are not being able to go outside and not being able to see people and interact with people really are grabbing a hold of Facebook because it's a way that they can be involved in other people's lives and not feel like they're all by themselves. Next slide, please. All right, so we've got all these great things we want to do. And one of the things you learn in when you take your fire and life safety educator classes is to look at your needs versus your budget. Well, for some of your departments, your budget may be minimal or non-existent for community risk reduction. So how do you figure out how you're going to be able to reach people? Well, we know social media, the, uh, the budget for that is really time, that most of what you do is free of charge. It's your time that becomes, your time becomes part of that. So this is where your boots on the ground really comes into play. You've built that relationship with the breakfast club and perhaps now you can get liners in the restaurant on the trays. Um, you've built that, built those relationships with your churches. And if you're like me, and if you go to church, when you sit down in the pew, what's the first thing you do? For me, it's I read the bulletin from cover to cover. And so get messages in the bulletin. Um, check your smoke alarms. Are your kids' car seats in right? Whatever it might be. Uh, put a message in the, for the Spanish mass that you're gonna be blessing car seats after the Spanish mass. Um, and it, because we, we know that if the priest blesses the seat, it holds a higher level in their life than if we just help them with it. So again, it's about building these partnerships and building these relationships and getting your boots on the ground. And back to the breakfast club, oftentimes when you go in and sit down there and notice them, when they're reading the newspaper, they start at the obituaries. I guess they wanna figure out if they're still alive. So uh, see if you can get a message in, that, in the obituary section, I know that sounds kind of odd, on fall prevention or fire prevention, because if you know that that's a section of the newspaper they're gonna read, Put your messaging in there. So again, knowing your audience, as Ben said, thinking outside the box, being creative, and really going where they are. Maria, when she introduced me, mentioned that I'm a member of the Junior League of Winston-Salem. I was also a member of the Junior League of Salt Lake. And for those of you who do not know what Junior League is, we are a group of women who promote volunteerism and leadership among women, and we work to make our communities better. And most often we are working with high risk communities. And one of our strong beliefs is that we can only do this through partnerships. And I could spend the next five minutes talking to you about the partnerships that we have in the Winston-Salem area through our junior league. So I encourage you that if you do have a junior league, because we are trying to do things during COVID, maybe not to the same extent we normally do, get a hold of your junior league, see how you can partner with them. A great way to get straight to that target audience that you may have. Another thing that partnerships are great for, and this is one of the things that was mentioned on that Facebook event, was that sometimes you are not the right person to deliver the message. And boy, that is hard for me to hear because I want ever, I, I, the deputy director for the highway safety office said, if Teresa couldn't convince somebody to wear a seatbelt, nobody could. So that's a really hard thing for me to get, but it's, it is what it is. So when I worked for the Utah Highway Safety Office, we were so excited when a member of the Navajo Reservation beca became a car seat technician because we knew that she could get in there and be more successful than we could ever be. When we were able to wrap a race car in a coal mining town in the middle of no nowhere, Utah, with traffic safety messages, we knew that that was going to be better than anything that we could do. So again, if you're not the right person for the message, figure out who is, get your boots on the ground. Next slide, please. So these are just some, as Ben said, out of the box ideas. 
And again, it comes down to knowing your audience. If you look at the top left-hand corner, that's a bar slash restaurant in Salt Lake. You see the University of Utah banner. And what you see in the middle is a table that simulates when you're talking to someone on the telephone and they're in jail, they're on the other side. With, so it's a drinking and driving message. And then you see the different air fresheners for the car, sweaty cellmate, cellmate, prison cafeteria, jailhouse bathroom. And then of course on the right, those are all different t-shirts and sweatshirts for their motorcycle campaign. They have a lot of motorcycle crashes and deaths because there isn't a helmet law if you're over 21. So some creative ideas. And then of course the toilet tabloids, which you will find here as well. How many of you all have been to like say the health department for a class and when you go in the toilet, what's on the door? So they are reaching a very specific audience with that. Again, boots on the ground, see how these different agencies are reaching their audiences and maybe you could get a article or some type of messaging on that toilet tab toilet tabloid. Next please. Our fire station actually sits in front of the car line to the elementary school. So pre-COVID, five days a week, two times a day, and even now some of them are still in school, we have a captive audience coming in two directions right in front of us. We have parents and grandparents of elementary school children, and we have definitely used this to our advantage. We have an LED board where we put up things like you see right here. There's no excuse for not having your children in their car seats because it is not uncommon to sit on the bumper of our fire truck and see car after car drive by with a child standing up waving at you as they're going up the drive to the elementary school. We also use the hot cars display. We get a lot of feedback from that. And we are the only permanent checking station, well, probably within 50 miles. So we are the only one in Surrey County. So we get a lot of appointments. We get a lot of questions. We serve a lot of people. We even serve people from Virginia. So we definitely use that to our advantage during Halloween. We, uh, the day before Halloween or the day of Halloween, if it's during the week, we will walk from car to car in the car line and hand out Safe Kids reflector bags with information on Halloween safety. And we've got them so spooled, they'll just roll down their window and go five, two, one. So that's great. That's that relationship that you wanna build with your community. Next. For some of our audiences, the standard messaging is not going to work. We know that it changes with ages, but sometimes it changes with culture. One of the most successful programs that I've ever been a part of was with the Utah Highway Safety Office, and I managed 17 federal grants. And so I saw firsthand that a message that worked in Salt Lake City may not work on the reservation or in a coal mining community. And I wanna talk very briefly about one of the examples. Our data showed that we had a high instance of drinking and driving among the Hispanic community in a town north of Salt Lake. And none of the messaging that we had seemed to work for this Hispanic outreach grant. So we brought someone in from Denver to, to get their boots on the ground. And what they discovered was the largest percentage of this population was from Guatemala. Well, the materials were written in Castilian Spanish. So I'm gonna read this because I always mess this up. For those of you that don't know, Guatemalan Spanish is the national variant of Spanish. It includes the use of the second person singular personal pronoun, boss, alongside the standard Spanish second personal singular pronoun to and instead to form a three level system of second person singular address. So I say all that to say, when we rewrote the materials in that language, our success level went up. Boots on the ground. Next, please. One of the things that we've learned about our community is that they love quirky things, quirky sayings, outside the box sayings, and these are some of our most popular. Uh, Cousin Eddie says Twitter is full, that one will go up in a couple of weeks. Your car is not a phone booth, just drive. Uh, the get your head out of your apps, I had a teacher stop and say, what did that say? Because they thought that said get your head out of your. So again, just attention getting things. We get a lot of questions about what does no catch up mean? where it says no speeding, no texting, no catch up. And so of course we say that means don't eat and drive. Again, about knowing your community and we know they're seeing it. It's not formal analytics, but we know that they're seeing it because they're actually asking questions or about making remarks. Next slide, please. 
Maria, am I good on time? Am I good on time, Maria? Yeah, I'm muted. Yes. Okay. Minutes. Okay. So data collection. Ben talked a little bit about analytics and data collection. Most of you are near or, around, or near a community college, and North Carolina Community College is the small business center. They are always offering classes on social media for businesses where they will teach you the basics of analytics and data collection. And if you're new to this world, I would really encourage you to take one of those classes. They're usually free. Sometimes your analytics though, like the slide before I showed you, are gonna be verbal. And I'm gonna share a story where I learned something the hard way. Uh, during the summer, I don't watch a lot of TV anyway, and during the summer I was really, really heavily involved with some recruitment and retention activities we were doing here, and I definitely wasn't paying attention to the news. And one of the sayings that I put up on our LED set said, save warp speed for Captain Kirk. Well, that means don't speed, right? The fire department, town hall, uh, Virginia Fox's office, the Republican headquarters, this guy started calling all of them, complaining, and that it was it needed to come down immediately, uh, that who did the, we think we were getting involved in politics, and I didn't understand what he was saying until I was told that there is a project called Operation Warp Speed. So on the upside, although we ended up taking it down, of course, on the upside, Somebody was paying attention. In fact, I was told that he kept driving around until we took it down. So hopefully when he was driving around, he saw some of the other things we had up there as well. All right, next slide, please. Maria's gonna show you a video, just a short video, and we'll talk about it. that I made to do website retargeting for recruitment and retention. And as Ben said, you don't have to spend a lot of money. I did this video myself using kazoa.com, K-I-Z-O-A, if no one's used that before, with photos that we had and there's music that is available for you on there. We spent $500 to do website retargeting. And when we did this, this was in a month that just ended a couple weeks ago. We reached 30,720 people. And for those of you that have done research, website retargeting on Facebook and Instagram, you know that you can choose your audience. And so it was a very select audience. For, so for us, 30,720 people was great. And not only did we get people who came to our website to learn more about becoming a volunteer firefighter, we also got more page likes, which means more people exposed to our fire life safety messages. One of the things that we started about three years ago, we're a company-based fire department, very paramilitary, was we started, we have B and C, and we started A Company. And A Company, and this all comes from Chief Donna, Donna Black, who is the Chief of Duck Fire Department. She assisted us with this. It's a group of volunteer firefighters who do not want to do non-interior. In fact, what brought a lot of, what brings a lot of them here is the Fire and Life Safety Education, the pub ed events. And so we actually created our own Fire and Life Safety Education team through a company. Now others belong to it as well, but that's one of the things that has come about from videos like this. We have a volunteer who actually requested a Sparky suit and that's her in that and she does Sparky for everything. So if, if you're looking to create a fire and life safety team, aside from your suppression, call me. Happy to help you with our A company or call Chief Black if you know her. Next slide, please. So you're probably asking yourself, what's the link between recruitment and retention and fire and life safety education? If you want your community to listen to you, you need to show them who you are. So ask yourself, what story are you telling? And what story do you want to tell? And if you'll notice on here, we, we acknowledge service anniversaries. Uh, some, several of our volunteers have been here 22, 25, 30 years, uh, birthdays. During the month of August, they logged 483 hours of training. 
uh, they can pull station duty. That's our explorers doing smoke alarm canvassing. And so when we put that up there, then they share it with their friends and they share it with their friends. And so when we go out in the community, they know who we are. And again, as I said, during COVID, we're getting more and more reactions to just simple birthdays or logging 483 hours of training in a month or whatever it might be. Tracy in the middle of bottom, that was her coming on as a volunteer and she's a professor at the local community college. So use, use every avenue that you have to help people figure out who you are and what story you're telling. And we took it a step further during uh, fire prevention week and month in that some of our volunteers, a group of them, recorded PSAs for fire safety for our local radio station using the NFPA educational messaging tool. So they would say, hi, my name is volunteer firefighter Tracy Balance, and followed by the, the message. And the fact that these people could put a face with that helped even more because in a town of 4,000, believe it or not, everybody doesn't know everybody. So great thing to do. Next slide, please. One of the things that we talked about on, or that was discussed Monday during the Facebook event was that our communities are struggling right now during COVID. It's really affected people in a mental, in a mental health way. And even in our small community, we saw within the first month or two that this was really happening. So this is a photo of myself in the dinosaur costume, which I found the butt swishes as you move, which I thought, which I'm sure it was wonderful, walking down the street. And one of our volunteers is Sparky and one of our other volunteers walking along beside us to make sure we didn't fall. And we just got up one Saturday morning and put on our stuff and just walked several streets in the community and stopped and spoke to kids and waved at cars and took pictures. Again, remember that we are, our community needs us through the tough times. They, they need us for everything and a tough time doesn't necessarily mean a 911 call. So just get out there. Uh, for Christmas, we are going to actually do a fire truck parade, just a fire truck parade through the town with Santa waving at everybody. That's it, just driving around through the streets. You know, one fire truck, not exposing ourselves to anybody, just waving. So just, Remind your community that they are loved and they are not forgotten. Next slide, please. That's all. Thank y'all. Everybody stay safe. Uh, thank you so much, Teresa. Your, I love seeing your department's posts, the birthdays and things like that. And I've already jotted down what I'm gonna do for the next couple weeks. Uh, I'm going to see if I can get some information in. I know a lot of our churches aren't meeting in person right now, but hopefully they're still doing emailed newsletters and things. I'm going to see if I can get some NFPA messaging on winter safety or holiday safety um, on some of their information. So thank you for that thought. We're going to move to our third speaker, Emily Powell. She is with Chapel Hill Fire Department. She was there for almost 10 years as a firefighter. She left for about three years to go to UNC Chapel Hill as, the, as part of the fire safety group there. There she was able to round out some professional skills and gain some different experiences before returning to Chapel Hill Fire Department in October 2019. And I just have to give her a shout out because she would be what we would consider one of the newbie educators. I'm just having a couple months in, I met her at the conference in February and through conversation there, uh, I started following Chapel Hill Fire Department on Facebook. And I wanna give her a shout out and a kudos because she has done some phenomenal things on social media since COVID. And I'm so excited to have you hear from her today. Emily, are you ready? I'm ready. Perfect, all right. Thanks, Maria. So first of all, let me just tell you how much this kills me. Like. I am a people person and I am just talking to some black boxes on my screen right now. So you can imagine what it's like to be six months into your dream job of being a public educator for the fire department that you love in the town you love. And then they're like, Emily, don't go talk to anybody. Don't see the kids. Nobody's coming to the fire station, but here's a laptop. Uh, so right now I am just dying that I cannot engage with people, which is kind of how we got to where we are with Maria asking me to be on this panel. She said, you know, when COVID hit, you just hit the ground running and you did so many amazing things. 
And I said, Maria, it's because I was worried I was going to lose my job or they were going to put me back on the fire truck and nobody wants that. So I had to do something because here I was six months into this position, a brand new position. And I was really in the peak of gathering data and proving that I was using my resources and looking at what changes I could do and how I was affecting and I was justifying my position. And I was going to be the first one out the door if this thing got really bad. Also, I also thought it was only going to last like three weeks. And here we are like 35 weeks into it, right? So Maria said, well, what can you teach him? And I said, I can teach him everything I did wrong because I, I did a lot wrong because we came into unprecedented times and the best I could hear was there's no rules anymore. Uh, you know, we're all really busy. I'm like, you're on your own. So I was like, yes, I'm going for it. I can, you know, there's no rules. I am going for it. So let me see what I can do. And I did what I would want to do as a parent. You know, all these kids are locked in the house. So the first thing I did was I tried to entertain the kids. Um, and so I always looked at it through the eyes of how can we be helpful the most? And early on, I grabbed my phone, I set up a science lesson because schools were canceled and I wanted to help teachers and parents. And I set up the easiest fire lesson that I could think of, uh, the fire triangle. And I just did a, a video. And what I learned from doing my first Facebook video was one, it takes a lot longer than I ever would have thought. So you heard Teresa and you heard Ben say, nothing has to be fancy, but don't underestimate the time that it takes to do it well and to get the words that you want to come out of your mouth. So that's my first lesson. Whether you're doing a video or trying to take a photo or creating a social media post, think about the time that it could take. These things don't just rattle off really quickly. They can be easy, but when you want to put a little bit of perfection to it, a little bit of polish to it, you're going to take a couple tries. So don't think like the day of Thanksgiving, you can create a Thanksgiving post. Spend some time, schedule out all those social media posts ahead of time. So there, there's second lesson already. We, uh, we learned that when it comes to social media posting, and you'll see up on your screen, um, one of the uh, graphics I did, that took longer than I thought. And that was another thing that I learned how to do. I started to um, look as a consumer about what was catching my attention. What did I like to see on my Facebook feeds? Not just like, oh, that's funny. Let me parody it or let me copy it. Like what about that graphic made it look really good? And so this is where I got into saying, um, well, you know, that, that image is lifted off the screen. How do I do that? And then here comes Brene Duggan saying, well, you go to Canva and you use the lift feature and the shadow feature. So then there was lots of training involved too and reaching out to other professionals. So there's your third lesson. Reach out to those other professionals that um, are really good. And here there's a panel full of them. Like I'm gonna hit up Ben after this because I've got some questions about analytics. Um, so my third lesson, while I'm just going for it, remember? Like early COVID, just going for it. Don't know what I'm doing. I'm just learning, I'm putting it out there and every time I'm getting better and I'm getting my training along the way. So other than that, um, I kind of made a plan early on just to do one thing a week and that's where you saw lots of live videos and that's how we got the firefighters engaged. And it, wasn't, it was less about fire safety at that point. It was about providing something to the community um, and keeping our firefighters engaged where they wouldn't ordinarily be because they weren't allowed to go do pub eds either. So just threw it at them, did things like live um, ladder tours, which was so much fun to take it up. We had a cloudy day, but take them up in the ladder, show them around, try to reach out to the neighborhood so that they come outside before you do that. That was a lot of fun. Um, and then all that stuff kind of slowed down. Those live videos, they slowed down because we got a little fatigued with it, right? People wanted to get off the computer. So you'll see in the analytics, we had good engagement and then things kind of died down. And that's when I said, now I got to come up with more new things. Um, it also became uh, fire prevention week at that point. And we usually do like 19 fire prevention week, just in the week alone events, uh, a puppet show where the field trips come into the, our fireplace, which is our, our museum. It's like a auxiliary station that we have. But we couldn't do that anymore. There was no schools, there were no field trips. So what could I do? Well, I scrambled to put together some um, virtual field trips. So here, I think we're at like lesson four already. Um, 
I learned that I can't do that all by myself. I scheduled these virtual field trips, reached out across the county. Again, it was a global pandemic. There were no rules. So I left my jurisdiction. I advertised to the entire county because we really worked with a bigger audience and more partners because we couldn't do all these unique things on our own. So I reached out to other fire departments, the county fire departments, police departments, and school systems outside of the city. So that I ended up teaching um, schools outside of Chapel Hill. So again, the numbers, the data got a little iffy, right? Like I don't count those in our, in our year end data in our ISO numbers, but provided the service nonetheless. So I do these virtual station tours and finally my heart is full. We've got engagement with kids. I can see kids' faces. And Lord, I have a seven-year-old, so I know they're trying to hit that mute button and unmute button. And they're telling me stories about their dogs, just like they would in the fire station. And it's even messier. But the teachers, God bless them, they are doing their best. But I finally got that engagement. I couldn't hear. I finally got the engagement that I needed back from the kids. So that was really heartwarming, too. But what I learned is that that was harder than I thought. I went out to do it by myself and I'm trying to get dressed and I'm trying to open compartment doors and I'm trying to hold a selfie stick. So again, reach out to people in your department, grab somebody either in the fire marshal's office or a firefighter to help you with these things. Always have um, another hand, even like right now on this virtual um, webinar, you see that Maria and Kelly are both working together to moderate the panel. So always have somebody that can kind of, pick up your pieces because while you're talking to somebody virtually, it's, you have to stay focused on that conversation. You can't worry about the technology on top of it. So that was another lesson that I learned. Um, oh, and then I wanted to show you, um, this was hard to, to talk about to do because you see the picture there in the middle. That was a group that I was doing I posted that to social media to let people know that we were still offering these services, that we were still engaged with the community, that work was still being done to keep everybody safe. But you see, I had to black everybody's faces out or I used a green box. Um, so that just made it a little bit trickier because you can't really share that experience with people. I couldn't share those field trips with anybody because it was full of kids' faces on the screen. Um, and then to wrap up this slide, uh, Ben talked about analytics. And I just wanted to show you my October because this is a really good demonstration of what those analytics show you. So that first week there, that first five peaks, those are my social media posts for Fire Prevention Week. So you see every post hit, every post hit. But then I got tired. That post um, Fire Prevention Week kind of fatigue set in, things calmed down. I didn't have anything scheduled. So there was kind of quiet, quiet on my, my Facebook page. I lost my engagement. But then what's interesting is those large peaks there at the end, those are the human interest posts. So what you see there are not fire safety messages, not um, response posts about, you know, stay away from this intersection or something. Those are the stories where we're telling people about ourselves, where we're showing training or we're showing like um, we do a meet the crew series where we talk about the actual people that wear our uniforms. And those always get really good interaction. So just to follow up what Ben and Teresa said about human interest post being really effective. The best thing about that is that when you have those posts, they stay and they hear the fire safety messages. That is a trick I learned from our police department because they would always post their speed traps early on, like early days of Twitter and Facebook, they would post their speed traps. And I said, why do you guys do that? They say, because people wanna know where those are. So they follow us. Now we've got the audience that we need and they stay for the safety messages. They stay for the information we need to get at. I was like, brilliant. So that's what I use. And you see, we do a combination balancing those human interest posts and um, fire safety posts. Marie, you wanna go to the next slide? Okay, so post, um, going back to those virtual field trips, I, again, talking about data, right? I, I started this whole virtual thing because I was losing my data early on. I said, well, I got to get some data out of this. So again, talked to Brene, Bray um, Duggins, and she said, you got to use those Google Forms, those Google Docs. So quick, 10-minute Google Doc feedback form, 
after fire prevention week, emailed this out and I got some, some numbers off of it. How many kids you had, um, you know, the quality that they thought the materials I provided them were. And then I left that uh, qualitative section down there too, for just open-ended feedback. And I was able to, to gather some stuff that I can take back to my staff, my department and say, look, this is what we did do. I didn't have anything to go off of, but this is what, but people were happy with what we did. So um, I was happy with that, with that feedback. That gave me the numbers that we needed, uh, the qualitative feedback, because I'm not gonna put these tools away at the end of COVID. So that's one thing that I kind of realized yesterday is we forced ourselves during this pandemic to learn new skills, to learn new tools that we never really wanted to, never intended to. This was not, I was not gonna build Google Classrooms and docs and slides and learn Zoom, right? Nobody probably was. But I'm not gonna put those skills away either when this is over, because there's still gonna be a place for them. So I'm taking all my lessons and I'm keeping them. And now I just have one more thing to offer people when they say, you know what, I've got a shut-in resident or, I know you don't have time, but if we can maybe get you on FaceTime for 10 minutes, can you walk through a home safety check? Something like that. So don't put these tools away. Continue to use your, your virtual field trips, your virtual Zooms. Um, continue to build virtual classrooms and, and interactive documents that you can send out to really round out what you give to teachers and parents and families. Um, I think that's all I have for you guys. Yeah, um, and always be advertising. So this is, <laughs> this is a, a silly question for Ben I have later, but I'm always worried that I'm, I'm preaching to the choir, right? So I'm gonna share my fire department Twitter and my fire department Facebook with you guys, and hopefully you pick it up and maybe share some things, and my, my audience trickles out and eventually it gets out there beyond the firefighters, beyond my mom. Um, <laughs> but by sharing it, every time you possibly can. Put it on everything you can. Every slideshow, every vehicle, every flyer, every t-shirt. Keep getting it out there just so you're physically spreading your, your handles so that people will come to your page and then you have them when you need them. Uh, that is all my lessons. I think I gave you about five or six good lessons and I've already taken down a couple things that I'm gonna do. Maria, I've got my, my action plan for the next week. Perfect. So. Uh to say if anybody is not following them on Facebook you need to go on there and look for a video she did from home with her son about fire escape ladders. Maria that was on my personal page I could not post that oh, one. Never mind. Never mind. Actually, you, know, you, you know what that that reminds me that is lesson six and a half about staying on brand you're right um that one I felt like it was a little too personal a little too much off of the town's uh brand the marketing and I think um Rebecca or somebody's going to talk about that later, but it 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 left too much of the fire department out of it. So I kind of came back to our our communications department with the town. And I was like, this might not be the the one that we want to put forward. So lesson six and a half: work with your be on brand. I love it. You're always working. But what a good idea if you if you if your community's closed and you can't have people in the fire station. But could you get your own children outside the fire station to record a video or something like that? Um, just a thought. All right, everybody's done a great job so far and I'm very excited to introduce our next speaker. It's Lemuel Hubbard from the City of Raleigh Fire Department. He is their fire prevention coordinator and he has worked in the fire service for 14 years. 10 of those have been in operations as a firefighter and four of those has been, have been in fire education with the Office of the Fire Marshal. So I am going to let Lemuel take it away. Thank you, Maria. And, and, and I'm just so excited to talk to everyone today about partnerships. And it's, it's just, if you listen to all the, all the presenters this morning, partnerships has been in, in all, of our, all of our conversations. Um, it's just, just, it's all about working together and not working by yourself. And today I'm gonna to talk about how can we make it work? And if you see on this first picture here, we have, um, we're at Crabtree Valley Mall, one of our pre premier malls here in Raleigh. And this is the first year that we were not able to go to Crabtree Valley Mall due to COVID. 
uh, we had, for the past more than 20 years, we, we would set up a big fire prevention week display. And this year was one of our first years where we couldn't do it. And so it was, real, it was really kind of sad not being able to, to do the things that we were able to do in the past. So um, um, can you go to the next slide? So um, one, one thing about me is I love technology and I've always been a, a huge Windows guy and I recently became an Apple guy. And now I have a, co a quote for Bill Gates. Our success has really been based on partnerships from the very beginning. I remember when I first started as a fire educator and I was so excited uh, to, to, to do something new in the fire service, um, Jan Parker uh, reached out to me and said, hey, listen, there's a remembering when conference going on and, 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 Great, and, and Great, Wolf, Great Wolf Valley, Great Wolf, Great, Great Wolf Lodge. And I want you to be a part of it so you can learn a bit about this, about fire education. So I, we took the remembering when training and, it would, and we were able, I met Kelly for the first time and I was able to really learn like, wow, this is what public education is about. It's not about me being by myself. Having people who have done this job before to be able to instill their knowledge upon me helped me grow as a fire educator as I started this, this new, new career within the fire service. Next slide, please. And so what, what came next was, was, was partners. Um, ever since I, it's been four years since I've been a fire educator in Raleigh and I, and I was able to have many partners um, since I've started. But today I'm, I'm gonna only focus on four of, the, of four of my partners that I work with. And I can really talk all day about my partners who have been fantastic since I've worked here in Raleigh. And let's, let's go ahead and start with Raleigh Parks. Next slide, please. So Raleigh Parks has been um, a fantastic partner for me and, um, and, and, and my other educator worked with me, Yvonne Justice, ever since we started really working with fire education. And so um, let's go ahead and go to our next slide. So during fire prevention week and, and also throughout the year, we would set up our fire education tent and we would just sit up in a park and we would meet about, we would, we, would get, we would get out there about 9 a.m. and we would stay till about two. And we, we would have people just come visit us throughout the park, throughout the city. It was just one easy way to set up your, your, your activities where it, it, it didn't take, it doesn't take much um, effort once you develop the partnerships. And the development of the partnership throughout the years has just been fantastic. And Parks has constantly always telling us about things that they're doing and say, hey, listen, we love the fire department to come out. In, a in April, we, we have Letterland Day. And so we would be at, we would be, we would be the F, you know, for, for um, Fred the firefighter. And so we would set up, we would set up our, our display and talk about being Fred the firefighter. And we would have over, over, over a thousand people come out to pull in park one day during, during Letterland Day. So just working with your parks has been a really cool partner. Next slide. And next is showing you our youth fire academy, which is actually run through Parks and Rec. They take care of the registration. They take care of having counselors there, and the only thing, and they take care of the site. And the only thing we were responsible for was providing content and providing activities. It was a great way to, in, in terms of having engaging with our young people in a way that um, you know we, we're, we we created our 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 youth academy like they were like they were fire recruits. So they would spend a whole week as fire recruits. And earlier, earlier, this, earlier last year, uh, we, were, we were able to go to Charlotte and, and, and view the fire bowl. So we decided to say, hey, listen, let's add the fire bowl element to our academy. So um, as we were teaching the young people fire safety during Fire Youth Academy, um, we, we had this, this, this competition with all the kids about, about fire safety and we, and, and we asked them what they wanted as a prize and they wanted candy. So we bought like a $30 candy trophy for the winner and the kids were ecstatic. I mean, they were going at it. They were going at it learning about fire safety. And one thing I can say, those kids who participate in this event, if you were to talk to them about fire safety, they, they, have, they really learned about fire education. And it's just, there's just certain different ways you can educate with young people. All right, next slide. And so I, I come back to Pullen Park because 
Cullen Park is one of the one of the one of the most premier parks in Raleigh. It has uh, a carousel, it has a train ride, and, and it has a lot of different activities that, that are that are great to um, that are great to go and see. But every December for the past, I think, 10 to 12 years, they um a, they, they they turned Poland Park into Holiday Express, which is a winter wonderland. And so, and 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 then if you ever Walk, drive around Pullman Park during this time of the year, you, the traffic was terrible because so many people were coming to Pullman Park. You could go see Santa. They also had like a giant snow globe where you can go inside and you can actually take pictures and be in your snow globe. And so it was such an, it, it was such a, a really big event. So a couple of years ago, we just, we, we said, hey, listen, what can we do to be a part of Holiday Express? Which, which actually goes for 10 nights with about 1,500 people every night coming to see us. So the first year when we went out to um, Holiday Express, we sat next to the carousel, we set up our tent, we were engaging, we were seeing about uh, every 15 minutes, about 100 people would bum rush us to get fire safety information, and we were like bombarded for 10, 10 days straight. Let's go to the next slide. And so, and so the following year, um, uh, the, the team from um, Poland said, hey, listen, we love having you all here, but we want to make it more and more impactful. And said, so what can we do to make it more impactful? And so we sat down and we got together. We we're like, you know what? Um, Poland Park has an island that's away from everything. And because Holiday Express has been growing so big, they, they want to make us a feature. So we, we came up with S'more Station. So this is like um, our, our we, and we, we, had, we brought in some fire pits to create s'mores for, um, for, the, for the people who are visiting Poland and also learn about holiday safety. So we had a really, really big setup. And the cool thing about it was we weren't uh, with the big rushes of crowds, but throughout the night, we were making 1,200 s'mores a night, passing them out to all the residents. And we came up with a really cool system. The first two nights was kind of rough until we came up with a system of creating s'mores to get to everyone. But uh, we were able to engage in a way. So if you, if you got chocolate, marshmallows, and s'mores that you're giving to people, and then you, they're engaged, we're able to talk to them about fire, fire safety. We've got two fire pits in the back uh, where, we're, where we're also talking about fire pit safety. And, and we also have a little a movie theater to the side, which I don't have a picture of, that's, that's, that's showing holiday safety videos. Um, the Deck the Halls NFPA video was showing, and then we also showed Dan Dupas's video uh, from the NFPA, and we're just kind of really engaging um, the community in, in, uh, during, during Holiday Express, and it's become one of the, one of the hottest events to, to go from Holiday Express, and we're seeing 1,500 people every night talking about fire safety, and it was just a really huge success. All right, let's go to our next slide. And so um, this year, you know, like I said earlier, um, we had big plans for Fire Prevention Week. And so uh, we were actually planning to have a really big Raleigh Public Safety Day during Fire Prevention Week at, at, at Dordia Dix Park. And since COVID canceled everything, we're like, well, we, 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 like, like, like you all, you had to start from scratch. So we're like, what can we do different this year? And so um, through my partners uh, in the city, they said, hey, listen, uh, during October, we're looking for um, something to do for trivia. Do you, do you guys have anything? They're like, like, yeah, we can actually do fire safety trivia. So it was a really, really cool activity. Um, the, and the, the cool thing about it was we did all the prep work beforehand. So we, we got some firefighters and we filled them a, a asking questions for the trivia night. We also had Sparky uh, around asking questions about, 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 about trivia and fire safety. And so the night of trivia, um, this is partnered with the North Carolina uh, Museum of Sci Natural Sciences. So we've got like scientists who, who are coming for science trivia. We're actually bringing in some, some fire safety information. And then we also, act, we also brought in a fire triangle as, as a kind, of, a kind of a science question about fire safety. But we were able to really emphasize our point about cooking safety during, 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 during this trivia event. And it was just such a fun and fantastic time. And I, I, we were just so excited about having something new, something different during Fire Prevention Week. And this is something that, and the cool thing about it was um, the, the trivia group was already together. They had over 200 people who were, all, who were going to the trivia every, every week. So the audience was already there. So 
getting the people to come to the trivia was, was super easy because it's, hey, this is something people were interested in. And we're, and that's the benefit of using partnerships is you've got partners who are doing things that are great already. And all, all we want to do is say, listen, we want to partner with you, give you our message, and then pre pre um, pre present it in new and exciting ways. Next slide. So um, my next partner here is actually, um, it's going to be communications our, for, for the city of Raleigh. And I, I talk about my partners here. And for years, um, the fire department has always done things like within the fire department. If we need to uh, make a video, we do it in the fire department. Anything that we need to get done, we did it within the fire department. And so our, our, um, our city said, hey, listen, you know, we have a communication department in which the communication puts lots of money into communications. And so um, we, uh, we began to build that partnership within our communications department so to, to, to use the resources that are available um, because the city's already purchasing things and we can get a lot of great communication activities and it doesn't even come out of our budget for, for the things that we're doing. Now I want to go to our next our next slide. So for, for those of you who don't know, um, we, we got a brand new chief this year. Our previous chief retired last year and um, his, his name is Chief um, Herbert Griffin from Houston, Texas. And he's from Texas. And he's got big ideas. He's, and he's excited about the, Ra about the Raleigh Fire Department. And he's really excited to be here. And, and one of the things, when, when, I, when I met him uh, for the first time, he wanted his picture on the website. And he said, hey, listen, and I was talking to him. He said, listen, man, I need my picture on the website. I need you to make that happen as soon as possible. I said, great. I said, I, I, can, help you, I can help you get that done. So we took the picture. We got it on the website. And then at, at, while we were getting the picture done, he says, you know what? I've got a letter to the community, and I want you to get this letter out to the community. And so I, 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 said, I said, all right, Chief, we'll get that done for you as well. So let's go to the next slide. So, and so instead of, um, so, so, when, and so instead of reading the Chief's whole letter, I just wanted to give you the, the main points that I kind of got out of it. So his core values was just for the fire department, education, training, health and safety, and effective communication. Our chief was of the mindset of a, a week later, we sat down and he, he wanted to talk about the website. So we had the, the lead head guy of over the city website and, and the, the ITs who work on, on the website within the fire department. And I became a part with the, with the website because it's just such an integral tool that we can use within the fire service. And so, and, and so we met with the, with the team and, and she says, listen, I want a website that really, really showcases, um, you know, the fire department and it also gets quality fire and life safety education messages out. And so what we did was we, we decided to do a whole, or you can go to the next slide, a whole overhauling of our, of our total website. So um, the, the plan was simple. It, it, this, this, is, this, was, this is not an overnight process. We're actually probably in, in month two of this process. And we, our, our goal is to, to, to because we, are, you know, we, when you work for the fire department, you have more than one hat. So this is one of my hats that I'm working on. So my, my goal is to devote four to six hours a week into website development. And so we, we kept, and, then, and also uh, we're working with the, the web team in communication. So Every week we have a standing weekly meeting that just talks about our website. And the first thing was, was we created our plan of action and then, and, and we just finishing the audit of our website. So that meant we went through all of our web pages to see what was good, what was not. Because if you, if you were to look at our website um, we, 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 right now, uh, we got some good pages, but we had some really bad pages where just a lot of text that are on a website and that, doesn't, if you see a lot of words, you don't want to read it. And so um, we, we went, through every website, went through every web page that we have, and the goal was to delete all the unnecessary ones. And then we're creating a flow, a website flow chart. So as we're going, as, as we're, we're thinking it from the user's perspective, so we don't want you to go to more than one, to one, two to three clicks to get the information that you need from our site. And so, and then also, um, we decided that everyone who was working on the team is holding them accountable. 
And that's where that weekly meeting comes in when we put our work into getting the web website done. And this is just the beginning process of it. And so our goal is after we've completed um, overhauling and building a great website, our goal is gonna be, be simple. Make sure we have in fresh and current content. There's nothing that I don't I, and I hate more than going to a website and you see the same old content that you saw two years ago. We don't want we don't want our websites to be, be be stagnant. And then also let's create timeless materials. If you were in this morning's presentations, Shannon brought out the calendar that had all these great at great information that we use every year. So the goal is put that content on your website that you're going to use year round, and the, and that as the seasons change you change the content on your website to, um, to, to, to promote what, your current message. And then you've got to look, I know pretty much we talked about analytics all the way through. Website analytics is really important. One thing that I didn't know, over the last 30 days in the Cities of Raleigh, Cities of Raleigh Big Web page, we had over 330,000 people come to our website. And, I, and so, and, and, and on average, we'll have anywhere from eight to, to 16,000 people who view our website every day. So we, we got a lot of traffic going to our website and, that, the, and, and working with the web team, we're just gonna say, hey, listen, we gotta create our content in a way that when folks go to our website, we make it eye-catching. That's where we're using great imagery and having great, having great taglines to pull people um, to, 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 to view our website. So next, I want want to let's go to let's go to our next our next slide. So next, I want to want to take you through a tour. Go back. Let's see. Next, I want to take you to a tour of going going in our website um, to see to see what happens when um, see how we're using our website to make the process of learning much better. All right, so when you come, when, when you come to our web page, um, it's like, okay, this looks nice. You, I want you to go ahead and scroll down some. All right, you wanna scroll to the news section. All right, a little bit more. All right, now you see where it says right here, apply to be a Raleigh firefighter. All right, um, th this is what we are, don't click on it just yet, but this is where, this is where we're, we're, we're starting to, you, you can say here, this is where we're starting to begin that engagement process. Like, oh, I'm, I'm interested in being a firefighter. You can stay here for a second. I guess we're kind of a delay. All right, and so let's go ahead and scroll down and, and show the information for this page. All right. If you're interested in a firefighter, we're in the middle of our recruitment campaign, which is from November 1 to November 30th. All right, let's, and now I want you to scroll down to the bottom. I want to see if, if, if the Thanksgiving news article is at the bottom. All right, go back, please. Can you go, go back to the previous page, please? All right, now click on the news, um, the, the, the news link where it says news. It's up near the top, the, the news event services projects. Oh, all news, that works too. All right, scroll down, continue to scroll down. Scroll some more, scroll some more. All right, so um, starting next week, you see where it says dangerous and target fire? Starting next week, we're gonna feature this webpage on, on, in the same, on, on a front page for Thanksgiving um, to, to increase our traffic for Thanksgiving. 
So go ahead and click, go, go ahead and click on in, in the Thanksgiving tab. And so our goal was to make some, what can be eye catching. So if you, you, you go see the dangers of turkey fryer. So if you scroll down, um, we have the, the, the NFP, the video about turkey fryers. And then we're also having the, mo the most important information. This is a news article that's just talking about fire safety, about, about Thanksgiving safety. It's not a whole lot of content, but then we're also, it's not a whole lot of content, but, it's, but it, it gives you the information that you need. And so, and so, and so, and, and before we're also using the, the same information from NFPA for kids. So if you click on games for kids, So we're giving you activities and tips you can do with your kids during Thanksgiving. And then we also have, have links to, you see the Mad Libs download and then also, so click, click Mad Libs download. All right, that, that's just a quick way that we're able to use our website to use the resources, resources that we get from NFPA, which is one, another one of our partners as we're going through our site. And, and this time next year, um, our website is going to be totally revamped, and we can go back to the presentation now. So this time next year, it's going to be totally revamped, and we're just excited about what we're going to do for our website. Next slide. All right, so. Now, this is a, a really cool partnership that we have. So in, in, in the city of Raleigh, we have over half a million people who live in our city. And it's impossible for one person or two people to reach everyone. So what we, what we partner with um, Raleigh Water when they sell out the water bill. And so during the Fire Prevention Week for the past four years, we will put an article um, about Fire Prevention Week in the water bill, and we would send that water bill to everyone who gets water from the city of Raleigh. So more than 300,000 people get, get something from the Raleigh Fire Department in your water bill uh, about, 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 about fire safety. And that was just one way we're able to try to reach our, our, our whole population. And, and, and guess what? The cool thing about it, it didn't cost us anything at all. Um, they, they print a newsletter every month that um, the, the um, public utility does that goes to that goes to all all of our residents so we were able to really get a lot of, get our fire safety information out to the whole city and just by partnering with public utilities next slide all right the last thing i want to talk to you about is the is the ready raleigh emergency guide so um if you if you've ever been to raleigh um we have um dick's park we would have these big festivals at Dix Parks every year. So this year, so this year for Earth Day, we were planning a huge event for the 100 year anniversary. And so while we were planning that event, um, um, the, 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 the team decided to say, hey, listen, we want the police department and the Raleigh Fire Department to partner together for the event. And so our goal is to, hey, listen, let's create some emergency preparedness bags for, for the community. And then, and then also, so we were going to buy about 2,000 bags, put some, some emergency preparedness um, information in there, and we wanted to pass it out to the community. And so while we were um, planning um, to, to, to put a little small book, booklet together for, um, for, for Earth Day, um, COVID came and shut everything down. And so, but we were in the midst of planning this, this, this Ready Raleigh Guide, and, and it, it, it really blew up into this really big, big book. Um, and so go ahead and um, sc scroll to the next, next slide. And, and let's, let's, let's go ahead and click on, on the emergency, emergency guide for a second. Well, well, better yet, just, no, just go ahead and click for a second, see if it comes up. Okay, she put the link in the cloud. So listen, the Emergency Preparedness Guide um, is, 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 is a comprehensive book. All, all for police department, um, emergency management, the fire department, we all work together on putting this guide together. Take some time when you get a chance to look at the Emergency Preparedness Guide. 
when we get back to normal things in the in the fall, um, we're gonna when we go out and educate, we're gonna have a, a, a booklet that we're gonna pass out to everyone ab about emergency preparedness, and we're 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 going to pass out emergency preparedness guys to get our to get our our citizens. Hey, listen, we want to start the process. If we give you the bag, if we give you the resources, we want you to take the bag home, and so you can so you can have those those and be prepared. Let's go ahead and go to our last slide. So um, this is a quote from Steve Jobs, and he said, great things in business are never done by one person. They're done by a team of people. And, and that holds so true because whenever we do things in, 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 in business or in the fire service, we're not by ourselves. It's so easy as a fire educator because um, typically it's just one person who has a job, and it's such a big job, and it's such an important job. But just to let you know is that you've got partners all around you, all the people on this call, and you, you've got the NFPA, you've got um, the, the FS, FS, FLSC Council, um, and then the State Office of the Fire Marshal, and then your, your, your partners, your state partners are here with you to help you along the way. So don't be afraid to ask because, you know, it, it's, it's tough to try to do this job by yourself. And, and, and and to really be great, you know, it's better to have great things. You know, I, I was blessed to have a, a good te a, a team partner to work with me. Um, and so we've been working as a team, um, um, Educator Johnson, for the past few years. And, and it's just, it makes our job so much easier when you're not by yourselves. So that's my last thoughts for today. Awesome. Thank you so much. And I just want to reiterate something that he said. Um, I really love the Trivia Time Live that he did with the museum there in Raleigh. You may not have a museum in your community. Um, I have a small one, and now he's got my, my brain thinking of something I could do there. But um, I reached out to our local parks and recreation department. They were doing virtual bingos. And so I said, hey, can I get in on this bingo action? So we partnered together. We did bike safety bingo in the summer, and we partnered with Cabarrus Safe Kids and were able to get some, do some virtual helmet fittings and get some helmets given out into the community. We did fire safety bingo, and we've also are getting ready to do our Thanksgiving uh, bingo. So I just wanted to throw those out as ideas. All right, while we are while we are introducing Rebecca, go ahead and take a stretch. I know you've been sitting for a while and I know your brain is probably swimming in all of this information, but we have got a great pre presenter to, to hear from. This is Rebecca Thurston, who is the Public Information Officer for the City of Wilmington Fire Department. She took over in Wilmington Fire Department in July of this year after almost five years as the Fire and Life Safety Educator Public Information Officer for Greenville Fire Rescue in North Carolina. Before her time in the fire service, she was a television news reporter. She worked in both, e both Eastern North Carolina and also in Illinois. And because of her background in news, she has a very unique perspective on how to look at public relations. She has been a part of some fantastic things going on recently. She was a part of the fabulous crew from the East that did Close Before You Doze, the award-winning video. And um, she has presented at conferences in both North Carolina and the state of New York. And she was just on the recent rewrite committee for the NFPA's Remembering When curriculum. So without further ado, I want to introduce you to my friend, Rebecca Thurston. Thanks, Maria. And and just thank you all for sticking around. I know uh, there's been a lot of talking and a lot of ideas, and so it's we're probably getting to the overload point. So hang on, I'm the last one. Uh, I promise to make it painless, hopefully. Um, so like she said, news background um, as well as fire background, and so that's coming together here in this position a little bit differently than in my position in Greenville, um, which was um, a largely education focused, and here uh, is a lot bigger focused on public, public relations. 
Um, so I just want you to think for a second, really, when we think about public relations, what does that even mean? Um, and and uh, even more than that, why does a fire department care? You know, we, we are um, not some Fortune 500 company, so why do we care about public relations? And so I would um, say that public relations is actually really about um, these three things. And if you want to go to the next slide. Public relations is about sending the right messages to the right people um, and in the right place. And really what's not up there too, but in the right format. Um, and we're talking about different formats here. Everybody's talking about different formats, but um, it's about the right messages, right place, right people, right format. Public relations is also about creating a stronger brand reputation and recognition. So, um, for instance, um, in Greenville, we were both a fire and an EMS department. And so a lot of times um, that brand rec uh, recognition, what my goal was to make sure that people knew that sometimes fire trucks will come to an EMS call, but they can do the same exact things. And so um, it, you have to make sure that you are aware of what your recognition of what your, what your reputation is so that you can create an even stronger uh, version of that and so that the community is very aware of what your role is. And the last one is just telling your story your way. Um, a lot of times in my uh, career here at fire departments, I found that many, many people are scared of media and scared of social media and we're starting to come around to it, but really um, you, you've got to get ahead of things, um, and if you can tell the story your way, trust me, the media has become very, very lazy, and I'm allowed to say that because I'm a former member myself, but they, it, it's, it's lazy is the wrong word. They're so busy, they don't have time to uh, investigate of journalism, the crap out of things anymore, and so if you feed them something, they're going to take it, they're going to run with it, and that's going to be the day. So um, that's a little bit about what we're talking about here today. So you can go to the next post. So public relations, I thought this was a good um, in indicator. What people think we do, right? Public relations versus what is actually involved in that event planning, media relations, internal communication, digital and new media, reputation management, community relations, crisis communication, those are all things that I guarantee most of you guys are doing already, if not all of them. Um, but you don't think about that as what, um, as what is actually going on. And you may not um, have just one person working on it. It uh, may be multiple people, um, but I just want you to think about who's doing this in your department. It could be a chief, it could be a PIO, it could be your educator, um, it could be a volunteer even. Um, but so think about who's doing that um, and if no one is, um, maybe what, which of these um, really needs to get a boost um, when we're in this, things are a little bit different because of COVID. So it gives us a little bit extra time to think about these really important things. Next slide. So what's great about social media, which is probably why every one of us has talked about it, um, is that it covers almost all of those things that we're trying to do um, when we're thinking about public relations. It covers crisis communication. Twitter is really great for crisis communication because it's an in uh, quick moment, constant uh, communication. Um, we also um, hear, and you know, in every, in Greenville as well, I let my reporters and my news stations know that that's the place to go to get um, the most up-to-date information and the community as well. So if there's hurricanes or traffic alerts, that's where those fast-paced communications are going to come out. Um, your um, Instagram and your Facebook isn't going to be as fast-paced. They might see that, you know, next Thursday, and that's, you know, if that road's not closed anymore, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. So you want to use the right format for that. Um, reputation management is so, so important, um, which is why everybody's been talking about that as well, humanizing our first responders, right? Now is a very strange time and we want to make sure that um, people still remember that we are human beings as well. Um, and so it's really important that the community knows um, what we do, why we do it, and how we're always going to be there to serve them um, in their time of need. Um, the digital and new media, um, these creative posts really grab interest 
Um, and so you've got to be a little creative. Um, and, and each of these speakers have done a great job of that. Um, flyers, media, videos that you create can be shared on social media. Um, community relations, show your firefighters serving. Um, that's why those human interest posts are doing so well, because people want to see that, and they're going to share those things. Um, media relations, again, tell your stories to watch for content on your social media. My reporters know that, that when they work with me that um, in the mornings, they have to come up with an idea of, of things to go over for that day um, to pitch for stories. And one of the things I always tell them when I first meet them, I say, go through our social media. Chances are I've posted something. I may not shoot them a text every time something comes up, but if they're going through that, and then they will call. So just be ready for them when they do. Um, and then event planning. So there's not a lot of in-person events happening right now, but um, use the social, me social media for that as well. We did um, a live stream of our 9-11 ceremony um, here in Wilmington at our Fallen Firefighters Memorial, which was really special. We had quite a few attendees that way. Um, so get creative in how you can reach out and engage people, even in uh, socially distant times. Next slide. So these are some of the um, posts that um, have I've done since being here in Wilmington. Um, so when you're thinking about posting on social media, you really, really have to get media involved somehow. So like. Uh, when I say that, I mean some kind of graphic, an infographic, a picture, a video. Uh, the days of posting with just text, so that's way, way beyond us, um, you've got to use something. So um, you can decide on what kind of like conversation you want to have. If you want to be um, pretty relaxed and funny, like relax, this is just a drill. Um, you know, this one here is a very popular meme, and that one's, you um, can't see it very well here, but it's um, drivers, cell phones, and paying attention to the road. So it's the the girlfriend over here um, is upset, obviously, because he's the driver and he's looking at his cell phone. Um, and one thing that's also really important to uh, the Wilmington Fire Department is our history and honoring that. So um, I have a treasure trove of these old photos, and you can see in the um, top left that they're rolling hose. That was, I think, in the 70s. Um, but I try to tie those human interest pieces um, in somehow. and. Um, I think I saw that in one of the questions too, like how do you count those? You are still pulling people into your page. You can't necessarily count that reach, but if you're also sharing something else, I think with that one, I um, talked about our history, I talked about our work ethic. There's many ways that we're serving and you kind of have to culminate them all together. Um, so these are just a few of the things that you can um, use. Next. So when you're thinking about posting, think about um, what's trending. Um, I have culminated a list, actually right here, this is a me. This is a list of day by day hashtags, Motivational Monday, Memorial Monday, Monday Mood. And they are all the different ones um, that, that I went through and I thought could relate to fire departments somehow. Um, and so I have that, and then I'm actually working on another list about hashtags about anything that would um, relate back to us. So um, about equipment or accreditation or trading. And so that way I have those ready to go and that can help me come up with content when I get out uh, my social calendar for the week, Monday on Facebook, what am I gonna post? Um, and so I can put those out um, and, and plan those weeks out. So it's a nice mix of both um, human interest, but also um, education, but also, hey, by the way, did you know we are accredited? But also, hey, by the way, did you know that our firefighters, uh, you know, they, for instance, um, you can go to the next slide. Yes, the bottom left hand. Um, that one is all about eating. We've done a couple about food because uh, when we did a recent survey with the community, someone suggested um, that we work on meal planning and prep because they don't want us to waste taxpayer dollars. But we don't pay for any of their meals, right? So like there are misconceptions out there. So try to think about some of the ways that you can post that in a fun way and still educate the community on that. Um, Tuesday treat was a fun one. That's obviously before COVID. Um, that's why there's a little throwback in there. But um, 
Tuesday treat, good news twos, those are things that are already going to be trending. Those are going to bring more um, audiences into um, see your material. Um, Wednesday wisdom is a good one. Um, I put together a quick graphic for Labor Day because um, we wanted people to think about all of those things. So you don't have to bombard them with all um, things, good infographics like the Labor Day one. You know, make it fun. Um, and the chicken and pastry one actually really got a lot of engagement because we're in the South and what do people want to talk about? Chicken and pastry. So they, um, we asked them what their secret ingredient was and there were lots of um, posts. And I think I even need to try some of them because they sounded quite delicious. Um, one that, I don't remember if it's in here or not. Um, one of our Throwback Thursdays um, I included um, was a, a very old picture of some old firefighters, but they had some killer mustaches. And it's also No Shave November, right? So that's what people are talking about. It also was including our history. It was talking about um, a throwback that's talking about No Shave November. So there's bringing all of those things in and linking them together. That's what's going to make your really strong post. All right, so one thing that I've had a lot of success with, I think as, a, as many of these other speakers have, is video. Videos are going to engage um, folks a lot more because as you, if you think about it, when you're sitting there scrolling, you come across a video, you stop, watch it at least for a little bit. And so that's why you need to make sure they're very engaging in the beginning um, to make sure that people are gonna stay, right? So um, when COVID first hit, uh, several of us in the East, I was still in Greenville, got together and we were like, hey, let's put some cool videos together. So we did some songs about washing your hands. We did some um, cool music videos about um, get low and go, about clothes before you doze. We recycled that one. Um, and so we were trying to have different, I think, cooking and grilling safety um, and pull in partners. So because we partnered with Rocky Mount, with Wilson, with Bree and Thomasville, because we are partnering with um, folks, that share is extended. So partner, even if it's not folks in your community, it's other communities as well. Fire safety doesn't know any bounds, right? We don't have to um, stay inside our area. Um, so share and, and include other people, collaborate together. And um, that's, that's another thing that makes the job so fun. Um, so let's see here. The next video is if you haven't seen it, I don't know if it'll play or not, but here's just the first few couple of seconds of the Pose Before You Doze video. Close before you doze. Before you doze. Close before you doze. Before you doze. Close before you doze. Before you doze. Before you go to bed, close before you doze. Keep this in your head, close before you doze. Before you fall asleep, close before you doze. Close before you doze. Close before you doze. Fires in your home and you fast asleep. So if you, some of that was actually shot on a phone. Um, some of it was shot on a camera. Um, but those, if, you, if you're paying attention, that's the kind of stuff that's going to grab attention. People, it's catchy. You're welcome. You'll have that in your head the rest of the day. Um, but, but that's the kind of thing that is going to engage multiple people. Um, so have fun, have fun with it. Next slide. Um, so during fire prevention week, obviously we weren't doing a lot of preschool fire station tours. Um, so we put a short video together. If you can click on that first link, you can watch the first few seconds of that one. Um, it's, uh, we actually ended up sending it to the school system um, and shared it that way. It, it was put on their TV station. Um, but each, a lot of schools have their own television, government television station. Oops, we mixed the links up. So, for, well, she's figuring that. These, these videos, um, not the before you doze on. The videos that we're showing you are, are running on our government television channel, on the public schools channel. Um, we sent them to daycares and we had pictures of daycares saying thank you so much these a few kids watching the videos. Um, so there have been quite
quite a few people that have seen these things. Um, send them out. People are going to look for content. They're tired of their kids being at home um, or they need more things to do. Um, send them out. This is a recruitment video. Um, if, don't share it. You guys are the first to see this pink preview. Um, it's a campaign uh, targeting athletes because they're already uh, teamwork oriented. Um, they're active active people. And so this is just one of a whole um, campaign. Uh, <coughs> You like having your name on the back of your jersey? It's even better on the back of your turnout gear. Join WFD today. So the idea from that one came from things that were trending, right? There's the transition videos where they start doing one thing and they change clothes and outfits and they're in doing something else, right? So we knew um, that we wanted what, who we were targeting and we knew um, that that was a, a trend. And so I'm hopeful that um, these videos will do very well in one, not only bringing people to our social media sites, but also um, hopefully we'll get some uh, attention for recruitment. Cool. So we talked about social media doing these things, right? But what are some of the other ways to do this? And so when I wrote this presentation, I was hoping that people would talk to me, but um, you guys can't. So I'm just going to brainstorm with you, right? So um, what about radio, right? People think that radio is not really out there anymore, but it is. When I've spoken to um, our, our radio contacts in the area, they're saying that actually radio is very much still happening. And so um, sometimes you can do, they'll do free stuff with you. Go in once a month with to your one of your stations and talk about a CRR topic. Pick whatever it is for that month. If it's July, you can talk about water safety and swimming safety. If it's November, you can talk about cooking or Thanksgiving. Um, or you could talk about heaters if your area is a little colder. Here in Wilmington, it's a lovely like 65, so we're not really heating things. But um, talk about what's relevant in your area. These um, radio stations would be happy to do that. They would also be more happy if you spent money to do that, but they will also do it for free um, every, um, like once a month to a, a talk spot. Uh, talk to them, talk to the folks in your area. Um, one thing our city has too is digital billboards. Um, so we have things that go up that say um, different fire life safety messages that um, are in a PA EMAC approved. And so um, that's another way to get people to look in. Um, schools, like I said, schools and cities have their own TV channels. Um, they need content. Give it to them. Um, we want them to show our content. Um, press releases, spending time in the community, of course, pre-COVID. Um, but but not necessarily teaching, just teaching all the time. Just come alongside them. Um, spend time with people um, and let them know, again, this is all about humanizing. City newsletters. Um, when we all talked about the um, getting in the utility bills, that's huge. We're doing that right now. Um, newspapers, human interest piece in the newspaper. Pitch it to your one of your local magazines or one of your local newspapers and say, hey, I have some um, really cool firefighters with a cool background story. Um, would you like to do a, a piece on that? Right now, they are very hungry for anything that's not politics, COVID, like they will do it. Just got to get out there to them. And um, the next slide is our last one. Um, they asked me to, to plug CRR week, which is coming up in January, um, because we have some very talented CRR folks in our um, department here, Wendy is our uh, community risk reduction coordinator and she and Chief Walker, our fire marshal, sit on the board um, and CRR week is um, up and coming and you definitely want to be a part of it. Um, it's all about getting ahead of the call um, and it's um, supposed to be internal facing. It's supposed to be teaching our folks more about CRR and the five E's. So um, check that out. Um, make sure you go to their social media and their website and you can learn more about that and how that can help you um, as you move forward um, in the community risk reduction. That's all I've done. Thank you so much, Rebecca. I definitely uh, wrote down a lot of things that you said. I wrote down and underlined radio, and I also put down talking to my chiefs about our participation in CRR week 
as my thing to do before the end of the year so that we are ready to go because I think it's been said in a couple places that uh, internal communication is also an important part of what we do also. So thank you. A, a big part of my role, yeah. A couple other things that we wanted to do and we're wrapping up our time. It's been mentioned before, so I won't spend a long time on it, but I'll, here's your resource for trusted content. And here are some additional trusted resources. All of these were mentioned today. Uh, the CRR Net Google group is a great place to reach out to others that are doing fire and life safety, fire marshals work, um, the Fire and Life Safety Educators and Coordinators Facebook page. I do believe Sylvia Peace is on here and shout out to her uh, for running that Facebook page along with Michael who helps her out. And then Brene Duggins from Holly Grove Fire Department here in North Carolina. If you have questions about doing virtual content, her free page on virtual professional development is a great resource there. I do want to take a two seconds to mention that coming soon, this was started, this conversation for uh, the Fire and Life Safety Educators YouTube channel started in February. It was as if we knew something was coming down the pike, but we wanted a, a sharing house for all the great things that North Carolina Fire and Life Safety Educators and Injury Prevention personnel were doing. We do have a, face, a YouTube channel right now, but typically it's only been for the annual uh, st statistics and data presentations. But we're gonna be opening that up. You'll see some information coming out soon uh, where you can share your YouTube video on your station tour or uh, Blaze can share his clothes before you doze or some of his other different um, safety videos that he's made. We want it to be a landing page and a resource for other people either to share for educational purposes or to look through to get ideas to see what they can do next. Kelly mentioned this earlier, but it's worth mentioning one more time that grant opportunity for a community risk assessment is going on right now through the NFPA. They're looking for 250 new communities or department. And wouldn't it be great if a number of those came from right here in North Carolina. So don't forget that applications, the deadline for the final um, submission is December 16th. So mark that on your calendar. I've already done our application. It's a fairly simple application. You do have to have your chief's permission. Your chief has to be on board. And then you're looking for one other person, whether it be a department member or a community member to help you build that community risk assessment. And if you're brand new to doing public education or community risk reduction, a community risk assessment is a fantastic place to start. Just like Ben said you had to do social listening, this community risk assessment really lets you dive into your community to see what's going on. I put this last slide on here, the trees that are slow to grow bear the best fruit because you may be feeling a little well overwhelmed after this day of training. You may have four pages of great ideas and you're not sure exactly where to start first. So just remember, take it slowly. You don't have to do every idea that was mentioned. And, you know, I think there's that joke out there, you know, how does an eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Don't forget to take it one bite at a time. So here's a reminder of that presentation mind map that you saw earlier. Hopefully you have at least six things on there. We've got a Q&A session coming up, so you still may be able to add more. And I hope I've got way more than three things I can do, but I hope you've got, um, gotten a little bit of excitement um, for fire and life safety education and community risk reduction. And I hope that you've generated something that you can do within the next week something that you can do by the within the next month, and then something you can do six months from now. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen because it's our Q&A time and I'm gonna turn it back over to Kelly. Thanks, Maria. So I'm gonna ask all the panelists to turn your cameras back on. That way everybody can see your cute faces. And um, we only have a few questions. Um, 
It was so informational and everybody hung in there until the very end. And so we're so glad of that. Uh, Jason Dixon said, they mentioned the fire and life safety bowl. And we've had conversations about what is the future of the fire and life safety bowl. And we've discussed how do we restructure it? So with COVID canceling most of those in-person events, and school's not allowing us physically inside, is it time to restructure? So I would ask the group, I'm gonna turn it over to Maria, um, for you to kind of facilitate a little conversation about what do you think is viable for both a local fire and life safety bowl and then a state one based off of what we've learned? That's a great question, Jason. And we were just talking about that. Um, you know, I don't know that the state group, there is a state fire and life safety bowl committee. And I don't know that they have met to even start thinking about what was what would be next. But I certainly will um, reach back out to them since this question has been thrown up there. But I think that uh, I think we were already leading toward, we were already trending toward some technology use with that. Um, I think the big question that came up right as COVID hit was, um, I don't want to say continuity, I'm, I can't think of the word, uh, the content, making sure that uh, the, how did we get the content out without um, there being ways that people uh, could use it to maybe uh, gain points that they uh, uh, cheat for lack of a better word. But I will certainly uh, share that information with the committee and maybe we can get some conversations started. I definitely think uh, there will not be a 2021 as most schools don't know what they're doing, uh, but I think it's certainly something that we can look for um, for 2022 for sure. So as we wrap up today, I cannot believe we spent a whole day together. It's been wonderful. I would ask each one of you if there is one word that would describe how you feel as we close out 2020 related to what you've learned. And um, just think of one word that would describe it. Mine is encouraging. Oh, I'll go next. I was going to say mine is, and it's similar, mine is hopeful because I'm hoping, I, you know, all these little ideas come from the least expected places. And so I'm hopeful that um, I'm going to take this information, marinate it in my brain, and then within the next couple of weeks, get a really good idea so that I can get that calendar going that Shannon mentioned earlier. I want to go ahead and get that calendar set up so I kind of have a game plan. All right, I've got Rebecca up next. Um, I, I think adapt. I think that everyone adapted this year um, and, and, and really cool and different ways. And I think that we will continue to see that. Um, I don't think this is going anywhere, unfortunately. Um, and so, and even when, and if it does, uh, you know, I think we'll continue to adapt. This is the fire service. That's what we do. Um, and I think that we've done a really good job of that. So I think that that's, the word that um, comes to mind with this, this year. And, and for the participants um, in this, please continue to put your words in the chat. That is an encouragement to us. Lemuel, how about you, sir? I would say um, evolution. I mean, I feel like um, COVID has evolved the fire education in, in, in a way that we haven't thought about before. I mean, I mean, who, who knew we'd be doing this virtually a year ago? I mean, I want to pay money and say, hey, we're going to be doing this virtual and, you know, and it's going to be free. So, you know, it's, it's we go virtual and free. So it's like, I mean, it's, it's really involved. And I, I, I do believe that this aspect of our education is not going anywhere. We're, we're still going to be, be educating virtually um, um, moving forward, but I believe it's going to have a sense of balance with, with virtual and real life. So you don't, so we can take away that fatigue because doing this all day and day, that, that fatigue is real. It's truly real. Yeah, I, I agree. We're learning. Um, I know y'all were thinking, why'd they give us a big lunch? Well, I gave you a big lunch break because one thing we've learned because we've done a lot of these is you're doing your normal job and trying to catch a little training in between. So we've been giving you snippets. So maybe you could catch the morning or the afternoon, but we're learning as well. Okay, Em, tell us um, what your word would be. You said um, me? Oh, Emily. No, I, Sorry, oh, go ahead. 
probably been. I just jump in. Um, I'm going to go with selfless. I, as if the fire department wasn't already selfless enough, I think that a pandemic that nobody planned for uh, emphasizes that. And as educators, we continue to kind of put ourselves out there in whatever way we can help, um, changing our message or using our communication skills or now our graphics and technology skills to, to send a different kind of message. So selfless, I'm going to go with that for the fire service as a whole. All right, Ben, how about you, sir? Yeah, I think I would go optimistic. Um, you know, I'm optimistic that things are going to be better in 2021, and I'm optimistic about the things that we've learned about ourselves in 2020. And I think uh, opportunities like this where we can gather and network and learn from each other and find out how we're all adapting to these uh, weird circumstances uh, is, is a, a source of optimism for the future and how we can grow together and, and learn from one another. And um, I'm just really excited and, and glad to be a part of this here today. Thanks, Ben. And Teresa was unable to get back in, but Teresa Knopp said determined. Her word would be determined. And I think that is a great way. Uh, confetti is one that Dee Shelton said, but I would say we can all throw some confetti uh, that we made it through a wonderful day of training. Uh, thank you to our presenters. Thank you to the attendees. Thank you to the Home Fire Sprinkler Coalition who has been behind the scenes helping us run the technology. It really does take a village on every level, nationally, state level, county level, individual fire department. We're only as good as our partners. Um, I did enter the evaluation into the chat that will also be emailed out to you as well as information on the recording. So with that, I wanna give you a big thank you. I'm gonna ask um, Peg Paul and Lisa Woodward, who were our virtual hosts to put their camera on because you need to see their faces in the Chicago land uh, since they were helpful for this. Um, I'm going to give you a round of applause if it's possible to do that, but I'm going to ask um, Peg and Lisa if you can put your camera on so we can all thank you in the chat um, for this. There they are. Well, thank you all so much. No need to thank us. We This is a learning experience. This was just wonderful today. So thank you all. Have a great afternoon. We're going to end the recording and have a great day and happy Thanksgiving if we don't see you. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you.